Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a brief look at a really cool way to experience the classic Mac OS right in your web browser. That's right, you just go to a website, no setup required. It's called Infinite Mac and it was released back in March of this year to celebrate March and Tosh 2022. And this is the developer's blog post about it where he describes the backstory and what he based this project on. It's actually based on an existing in-browser emulator by James Friend and that's also accessible on the web. This is the site. I'll have all of the sites linked down below that I'm gonna talk about today. And yeah, so the developer behind Infinite Mac basically expanded on that existing project and created a couple different websites that you can go to to experience System 7, Mac OS 8, and most recently, Mac OS 9, which that was just released back in October. And this whole idea of in-browser emulation is one of the coolest things to me, and it's something we've talked a little bit about on this channel before. Obviously, nothing is going to beat having real hardware to install these operating systems on and sit in front of a keyboard and mouse and an old monitor and just relive that experience or perhaps experience it for the first time. But not everybody has access to a vintage Mac from the 1990s to install Mac OS 9 on. So going to a website on your modern computer, well, that makes it incredibly easy for a lot of people. This project is open source. It's over here on GitHub. So you could just download this and compile it yourself if you wanted to. To, or you could just head on over to system7.app, macOS8.app, or macOS9.app, even kanjitalk7.app. Now, kanjitalk is something that I've got a, a much larger in-depth video planned for, but to give you the gist of it, this is the Japanese localization of System 7 that was available, obviously, in Japan back when System 7 was a thing. So you can also experience that. And all of these websites work very similarly. They all boot up into their respective operating system, and you get a pile of sticky notes here on the desktop that tells you, welcome to Infinite Macintosh. It tells you a little bit about it. It mentions the sister sites down here. And as you can see, as of October 30th is when the macOS 9.app website was added. And it talks about networking support, which is a really cool thing we'll get into in a moment here. Because not only can you, you know, browse around and do System 7, Mac OS 8, or Mac OS 9 things, you can go to the About box, open up programs, do whatever you want, but you've also got a bunch of preloaded stuff in here. And we're not talking about just a few things. I mean, look at this games folder. We open this up, you've got 45 items in here. So we can scroll down here, and we've got... The Secret of Monkey Island. We can launch this up. I actually just watched a Hoy's video on this. I would highly recommend his channel, by the way, if you haven't ever heard of him. Go check him out. Makes great videos. But yeah, you see it changed the uh, color mode for us here. And yeah, sound works. So it's the Secret of Monkey Island running in your web browser, which on its own is a really cool thing. So we'll just close out of that. But yeah, so, I mean, you've got, like I said, just a ton of games in here to browse through. You do have a few uh, programs as well, like, you know, productivity software. You've got Microsoft Word on here. And this Infinite HD drive is available on all of these websites. So if I swap over to, uh, well, there's Kanji Talk 7. Let's go to macOS 9.app. Now, if you notice, one of the things I love, too, is he's got a period-specific, like, monitor here. So you see for System 7 and Kanji Talk, you've got, like, a beige Apple monitor. Then for macOS 8, you've got a white one here. And for Mac OS 9, you've got an Apple Studio display look going on here. Now, the really cool thing is you're not limited to the applications that are in this folder. You can drag your own files over into this emulator. So I've got a sample text document on my host computer, and I can just drag it into the browser, and you see it says copy to Mac. Files will be placed in the downloads folder, so we'll let go of the mouse. And now if I go to this icon here, which is labeled the outside world, there's a few folders in here. And there's that downloads folder. I can open that up, and there's my text document. I can open it up, and there's, you know, what I wrote in the text document. So we can close out of that. You can do the same thing to get files out of the emulator to your host computer by dragging them into the uploads folder. So for example, if I go into, let's go to uh, productivity here and go to Microsoft Word. Let me just write a little text document here. You know, hello, this was typed on Mac OS 9 in my web browser. Now you could save it directly to that folder. I'm just going to save it on my desktop and then drag it into the folder. So we'll save and we'll hit OK and we'll get out of Microsoft Word. And now if I open up the outside world 
folder here and I drag my text document to uploads, watch what happens. It'll come up with a file browser and I can then save this to my host computer. So, you know, I'll just save it to my desktop. It does zip it up for you. So, you know, I'll go to my desktop here and there it is. So, yeah, it's really awesome. But not only can you do that, you can actually network these emulators together. And all you have to do is, as it says right here, you go to a subdomain dot whatever site you want to go to, System 7, Kanjitalk 7, Mac OS 8, or Mac OS 9 dot app. And you can make the subdomain whatever you want. There's no like predefined list that you have to pull one from and go to. You can just type out a random string on your keyboard and put dot Mac OS 8 dot app or Mac OS 9 dot app, whichever one you want to go to. And if you just open up another browser session, like on another computer and go to that same subdomain, you'll be able to network those two sessions together and you could play games, share files, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to use hello, this is cool dot Mac OS 8 dot app since that's we haven't really taken a look at the Mac OS 8 one very much in this video. So we'll go to that. I've got another session opened up here. So I'm just going to bring that to the center of the screen here and we'll just open up the control panels and we'll go to file sharing and then you just fill in these three boxes here so we'll do owner name michael password mjd computer name you know mine and we'll start file sharing and so now if you notice down here at the very bottom you can barely make it out but it says ethernet zone hello this is cool one peer so that one peer is the other session that i have open so now on this one i can open up the chooser and we can select apple share and it should show my file server in here from the other session and there it is so i just select that and hit ok and then i gotta type in my name and password and i'll be able to see the infinite hd and the macintosh hd from this other session it's like it's so freaking cool so yeah i can uh click on that we'll hit ok here and oh whoops i don't want to do that i just want to close out of it and we should see on my desktop here yep there it is so yeah, then I'm really just scratching the surface in this video. This is just a little quick demo, but I highly recommend checking it out. I'll have all these links down below. And yeah, I mean, there you have it. It's it's System 7, Mac OS 8, Mac OS 9, or Kanji Talk 7 in your web browser. And it's definitely one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. Huge thanks to the developer behind this and the project that it's based on for putting all the time into this. But that's it for me. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.